G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are continuing and finishing our third 18 team series of the summer. I've been going through all 18 teams and their new year's resolutions for season 2024. And today it is the final video of this series and we're doing the Adelaide Crows. So first of all, shout out to all the Crows fans that were potentially looking forward to, to me doing their club in this series. You've had to be really patient and I really appreciate you sticking fat and waiting for the last video. So today we're gonna to talk about about eight things I've got here for the Adelaide Crows where essentially if they can tidy up these little uh, weaknesses if you want to call them that or you know continue to build on some existing strengths that will ultimately lead to them being a better side in 2024 like i said i have done all 18 teams now so if you're not a crows fan you can find uh, three different playlists on this channel new year's resolutions for teams uh, is one playlist i've done every team's best 22 for 2024 and analyze that and i've also done a projection of every team in the league's best 22 three years from now it's been a mountain of work i've had a whole heap of fun doing it i'm already kind of tinkering with the idea of potentially doing another 18 team series before the preseason starts we'll see but for now i hope you've been enjoying the content and uh also if you do me a favor if you are uh it would mean a lot to me if you did subscribe to the channel my analytics tell me something like in the last three Three months 120,000 different people have watched a video on this channel so if you're one of them who hasn't subscribed which is obviously going to be the majority of people in that number it would mean a lot to me if you did to help me grow but anyway let's crack into the new year's resolutions for the Adelaide Crows so the the pretext for the Crows and going into 2024 is they're obviously going to be trying to make finals they were very very close as close as the team can get to finishing in eighth spot I think is that where they that's where they would have finished had uh, they beaten Sydney obviously that was a pretty controversial way to lose that game but regardless I think overall as I've said in previous videos it has to be looked at as a success their season 2023 in fact it was their best season under Matthew Nix who's you know done a really good job of just slowly improving in a linear fashion year to year that's actually not a very easy thing to do as a rebuilding side and when you factor in they are the third youngest and second experienced list in the competition or at least they were going into 2023 uh, the fact that they've been able to improve in the way they have all the players that they've recruited have been integrated really well their game style is good which we'll go into specific soon i think adelaide are tracking along really really nicely so with that as the context let's talk about their new year's resolution so the first one I have is to kick goals that are clearly goals. No, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm sorry. That was that was rude. Uh, the first one I will talk about actually is somewhat related, and that's just generally goal kicking accuracy. I'm not talking about Ben Keys. that was a goal. But anyway, uh, goal kicking accuracy in particular was something that kind of plagued the Crows. Now, they were one of those teams that just had a lot of inside 50s. I think they were top five for inside 50s of the highest scoring side of the comp. Yet, they did leave a lot of goals on the table. They created a lot of opportunities, but didn't nail quite as much as they would like. So, to rattle off a few stats, six games this year, they lost where they had more scoring shots than the opposition. Apparently, score, goal kicking accuracy is the number one predictor of whether a team is likely to win a game of football. It sounds really redundant, but it's still kind of interesting. They also lost four games while leading at three-quarter time. They lost five games uh, by under two goals. So as much as it was a year of improvement, and they're obviously overwhelmingly positive, in my opinion, as an outsider looking in, they still left a few opportunities on the table. So you know, if they tidy up their goal kicking, obviously, that's going to result in more wins going forward. So uh, let's talk about the second one, and that is to remain being the highest scoring side. So it's funny to say that I just said that they, they left a lot of goals on the table they were still the number one scoring side this year very exciting to watch and to throw another stat at you they were also the highest tackling side in the competition in 2023 in terms of average tackles per game which is just crazy they were number one in the competition for you know overall points scored like I said but also scores per inside 50 so we're talking about a very efficient forward line which we already know but the stats back it up they were also a top six in the league for points from turnovers and time in forward half. So they're doing a really good job of keeping the ball in their forward half, generating opportunities and scoring overall. And just think what, what they could achieve if they were a little bit more accurate in front of goal. Plays really well as a cohesive unit, I think, in particular the forward line. But some individuals are worth mentioning. Obviously, Taylor Walker had kicked 76 goals or something like that. Yeah, 76. That's incredible. And he came second in the Coleman, which you, usually these days, 76 would almost win you the medal every year. Uh, Isaac Rankin also came in and had a career best season of 36 goals as well starting to fulfill his potential so they've just got so many different weapons so i guess the resolution is to just keep cultivating that advantage that they've got and remain the best scoring side in the competition the next resolution i have is again related to the forward line uh, and this is probably just about facilitating a bit of a, a baton change in the forward half uh, specifically i'm talking about taylor walker who turns 34 this year kicks 76 goals he's not gonna be around that much for that much longer but 
at the same time, Adelaide do have some really good young talent coming through uh, in terms of tall. So uh, Riley Philthorpe was obviously picked two overall in 2020, and he's tracking okay. 18 goals from 21 games is more of a forward ruck. He does pinch hit in the ruck, obviously, as well. Darcy Fogarty, as well, I think has shown some good signs of potentially being a good, consistent player for the Crows. You also factor in Tyler Welsh in this year's draft as well. So I guess what I'm saying here is this doesn't necessarily have to be a one-year process. I don't know if Taylor Walker is going to play in 2025. I generally don't know the answer to that but if we can start to see you know the young talented uh, players particularly the tall forwards that they've got start to you know pick up more of the slack comparatively then that's something that Adelaide would like to see in 2024. Moving away from the forward line a little bit, uh, the next resolution I have is to, I would like to see them slot Daniel Curtin into this side and play well and, and just slot in seamlessly, I guess is the resolution there. So obviously one of the most talked about draft picks in a little while, purely because of how many clubs tried to trade for Daniel Curtin, Adelaide with a successful one, obviously. And he looms as this really intriguing prospect in this year's draft, in my opinion. Purely because as well, we don't really know exactly where he's going to play. And I think there's been talk of him being drafted as a tall midfielder. I've already talked about how I probably think he starts his career in the back half. Whatever it is, finding a way to utilize his talents in season one, which I think is completely conceivable. I think he looks capable enough to be able to play from round one. He's physically mature. He's 197 centimeters and 90 odd kilos. I'm not sure exactly, but if he plays maybe as that roaming defender to start his career, maybe gets a little bit of a look in at stoppages. I have talked about this and I'm aware of repeating myself, but I'd like to see Daniel Curtin come into the side round one and contribute for the get-go. I think that would be a nice outcome for the Crows in 2024. Generally speaking, somewhat related to that, uh, talking about finding a winning mix of key position defenders. So we know Nick Murray probably would be the first choice one, as I understand it, has done his ACL. So they're going to have to work with that a little bit and I probably foresee the starting mix to be guys like Jordan Butts, Josh Worrell and Daniel Curtin who individually all are pretty decent. Obviously Curtin's probably going to be more of a third tall and uh, obviously we, we don't want to set too many high expectations on an 18 year old. That being said obviously I think that is going to be potentially a vulnerability for the Adelaide Crows in terms of the talent dis distribution of that best 22. The tall defensive stocks are probably the less pr their tall defensive stocks are probably the least proven, especially when you compare it to the forward line. So I just think getting that mix right, whether it's the guys I mentioned, maybe somebody else like a Borlaise or someone comes in, I don't really know all the different possible permutations of this back line, but either way, they need to focus on getting the right mix of those guys. The next one is a, fa a fairly big one, and that is to tidy up their away form a little bit. And, and uh, what I mean by that is there's obviously a big uh, disparity between the Adelaide Crows at Adelaide Oval, where they were dominant at times and beat some real heavyweights of the league. And then, you you know, their record away from home wasn't great. So to speak specifics, their record away was two wins and seven losses. And look, that's understandable. They're a young side that improved a lot in one year. And uh, we are nitpicking because winning away from home, particularly against good sides, is like the last thing you start to really achieve uh, with the exception of Fremantle, they seem to have no issue with it. But generally speaking, that's kind of like the last box you tick when you become a genuinely good side. But either way, there is a disparity, a stark difference between what they produced at home and away. Their two wins away from home were a three-point win in uh, Launceston against Hawthorne. Again, a bit of a scratchy performance. And then their final round win over the West Coast Eagles, where obviously West Coast, as well as West Coast have played in that game, I still think, not the most formidable opponent. So I think it's fair to suggest just winning a few more games away from home will be pretty important important uh, to actually trying to make finals in 2024. The next resolution I have is a slightly more positive one, and that is to continue to play well against the best sides. And that is something that I think is really promising from an Adelaide perspective, their ability to lift their own standards and play to a high level when they're playing against good sides. I do think that bodes well long-term. Specifically, you know, they beat Carlton, uh, they beat Brisbane, and they beat Port Adelaide twice. They also had two narrow losses to Collingwood. So we're not seeing them, you know, step up to the plate and fail to match with the best teams. They're getting bloody close. They had five single-figure margin losses this year. Three of them were against top four sides. Uh, they lost by six points to the Brisbane Lions at the Gabba. They lost to the Ds at the G by four points and Collingwood by two points at the MCG. So I do think this all bodes really well if they can continue showing up and playing well against these sides. That's absolutely something to aspire to again in 2024. And the final one is probably a little bit more of an airy-fairy one, but it's related to maybe transitioning to a new batch of young leaders at the Adelaide Trows. So we do know that they get great leadership from their aging stars. You know, I think it was clear for all to see in the Making Your Mark documentary how good a captain Rory Sloan was. They got some aging stars, you know, Taylor Walker we've talked about, um, you know, Rory Led, Matt Crouch, 
Brody Smith to some extent. So there's going to obviously be in the next few years, a little bit of a, a phasing out of those guys. And I'm intrigued to see what the next batch of young leaders at the Adelaide Trows looks like. So we know that Jordan Dawson is already captain and he seems to be a good captain from the outside looking in. Then there's some other players that are just starting to reach that level of maturation where they could really be leaders. And you know, Darcy Fogarty, Isaac Rankin, Ben Keyes. I know Ben Keyes is already in the leadership group. I had to look that up because I wasn't 100% sure. But there's still going to be a little bit of a vacuum when you consider it as well. Tom Doday was part of that leadership group and has now joined the Brisbane Lions. So Adelaide are now at that sort of phase where their leadership mix going forward is going to potentially look a little bit different with so many players just starting to enter their prime and make a name for themselves at AFL level and then a few guys sort of out the door probably over the next couple of seasons. So it sounds airy fairy, but it is an important one from an internal perspective anyway. But anyway, guys, that is my take on the Adelaide Crows and what they can fix or improve on or maybe consolidate going into next year to make them a better side. And from the outside looking in, I, I feel very confident that Adelaide are going to play finals in 2024. I mean, if they have another year where they narrowly miss out, do I think it's the end of the world? Probably not. Uh, but that being said, I think the way they've been building slowly over a number of years, the tenacity which with they play with, the stats, some of the stats I've thrown at you, highest scoring side, best tackling side, scores from turnovers. They're doing a lot right. It's just maybe a little bit of a gap between their best and worst, particularly home versus away. But I don't think it will take much for Adelaide to become a good side again in 2024. So that's my take on them, guys. Let me know in the comments section what you agree with or disagree with and any other resolutions that you can think of the Adelaide Crows. Uh, again, your input really does help me get better at what I do. So for now, I'll thank you for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.